For my next project, I'm going to attempt to make my own eyeglasses from scratch. Because I keep losing mine. But before I make them, I need to learn a little bit more about how they work and what shape I'll need to make the lenses. So I visited an optometrist for some help. Good morning, Andy. I'm Dr. Saber. Nice Hi. to meet you. We're going to be examining your eyes today. So I'm going to be attempting to make my own glasses from scratch. But first, can you kind of explain how the eye works and why people even need glasses? Our eyes work a lot like a camera. Our eyes allow light coming in to be focused and pass through various structures on their way to focusing at the back of the eye or our retina, where those light impulses are converted to signals that go up to our brain. Each eye collects its own set of signals and then in the brain they're combined to give us what we refer to as sight. The part of the eye that is light sensitive like film stock is called the retina. The cornea, pupil, iris, and the crystalline lens act like a camera lens to control how much light enters the eye and to focus the rays. The iris and pupil control how much light passes to the retina allowing you to see in both bright and dark environments. The cornea and crystalline lens act like the actual optics of the lens and similarly bend incoming light rays so that it focuses precisely at the back of our eye. Now there are some ways in which that focusing can go awry and those are known as refractive errors. The first of which is nearsightedness. Nearsightedness is where the optics of the eye are a little too strong and they result in the image being focused out ahead of the retina. This causes distant objects to be blurry and out of focus while near items are still in focus and that can be corrected with a concave lens to move the image back right at the proper place on the retina. Now on the other hand farsightedness or hyperopia that's the opposite condition where the optics of the eye are a little weak the image gets focused a little further behind the retina essentially it just causes a blur and can be fixed by placing a convex lens in front of the eye moving the focal point back to the retina. Now a third refractive error is astigmatism. Now we would all like the surfaces of our eye to be nice and spherical like a camera lens system, but the fact is that for 75% of us, the front surface of the eye and other surfaces are not perfectly spherical. They're actually slightly out of round, more oval shape. That causes multiple focal points to be developed inside of the eye. Uh, but that can be measured and compensated for by grinding a lens in an oval manner to compensate for that shape. Now that we've explained the different eye conditions that can affect how you see, let's go ahead and test your eyes. Number one or two. Two. Here's three, four. Three. Five, six. This is one. Seven, eight. Seven. Okay, great. All right, Andy, now that we've measured your eyes, let's talk about what your prescription means so that you can get on to manufacturing your lenses. Okay. As you can see on the card I've written out here for you, your right eye is abbreviated OD and your left eye is abbreviated OS. And also I would like to point out that the first number for each eye indicates the spherical component of your prescription, i.e. farsightedness or nearsightedness. Uh, of course, you are nearsighted. And then the second and third numbers refer to the cylinder power and axis. And the cylinder power is the total amount of astigmatism correction in each eye. Axis explains the orientation of the astigmatism going from zero to 180 degrees. And Andy, let me point out one more thing. Uh, you have a mild amount of astigmatism in each eye, and it may be difficult to be able to incorporate that specifically into your lenses. So I've gone ahead and combined the two components of your prescription, both the nearsightedness and the astigmatism, into one global prescription, if you will, as that will probably simplify the lens making process and get things quite close to your power. All right, thanks. So that should give me everything I need to know to start making my lenses. You're welcome, Andy. It's been my pleasure. With this new information, I now know both the overall shape and exact curvature I'll need for my lenses. In the next video, I'll actually make the glasses, starting from the raw ingredients. I'm going to give a special thanks to the animation company Studio Ballin in Cape Town, South Africa, who graciously offered to do the animations for this video. For the majority of my videos, I often actually do the motion graphics myself, which takes a lot of time on top of producing the videos themselves. So I'm very thankful for the help they've offered. Be sure to check out their website, studioballin.com.